Welcome to Horsemanship Journal Audio, where you can listen to your favourite articles, discussions and interviews with leading influencers from the world of horsemanship. Article 1. Breeding Special and Early Learning Ross has always enjoyed working with foals. It's so very rewarding to be part of the early stages of training. They are a complete canvas with an innocence yet mischievous quality that can never fail to make you smile. Though being as blank a canvas as a young foal is, it does put a level of responsibility on handlers or trainers to do them justice and to do the best by them for them. Ross hopes he can help you do just that. The psychology of the horse works the same whether you have a miniature Shetland or a Suffolk Punch. Regardless of age, the horse is a horse. The equine brain is designed for movement first and thought later. A horse that thinks first doesn't last very long. The horse has three natural responses to danger, fight, flight or freeze. Flight is the most common response you will see and associate with horses. A foal is born with a strong flight response, ready to be on the move a short time after birth. The following months for a foal are crucial for learning. It is during this time that the pathways in the brain for movement and learning develop at a rapid rate, which are influenced heavily by the way the horse learns. There are many different ways of learning that can occur for a horse, during training or in the environment. Some of the most common include imprinting, conditioning, operant conditioning, negative reinforcement and positive reinforcement. Learning is heavily influenced by past experiences, both the positive and the negative. There are many people that will quickly write off a young horse until the horse reaches a certain age that the human deems as acceptable to begin their ridden education. Ross often meets horses with this background, usually around the age of three to five years, that have had the very basics, sometimes not even that, of handling since a foal. The problem that can potentially arise here are that the horses have no education to refer in their relationships and interaction with people. They are essentially just maximised versions of what they were a few years previously, with no knowledge or the wrong knowledge of how they interact together. This does the horse an injustice and does not set the horse up for success in later life. Quite often, those very horses are incorrectly labelled as rude, bargy or disrespectful. When, really, do they know any better? All this can easily be avoided by being active in your horse's life from the very beginning, giving them a secure start. It is important to become involved in a foal's life, though not too early. At the time of birth, there is a controversial way of training foals in these very early stages, known as imprint training. This is where the foal is introduced to a number of stimuli, often before they've had a chance to stand. This method is quite controversial, some stating that the foal will grow to show little fear of stimuli and human contact. However, imprint training at the time of birth is done when the foal is at its most vulnerable, effectively taking away the freedom of choice in this overwhelming situation. Imprint training shows considerable similarities to the training method of flooding. There are two key words that Ross mentions, both with equal importance in the development of a foal. One, as previously mentioned, is training. The other is environmental. Training is everything we do with our horses, and he means everything, even if we aren't aware of it ourselves. Environmental is the external surroundings. Training may be obvious to how this would relate to a foal's development, but how does the environment factor in? The environment in this context refers to a foal's experiences with their surroundings. A foal born and starting life in a herd working on a farm is going to be much more confident and comfortable with loud machinery and noise. This specific example is known as habitation, an indirect form of training. However, a foal born in a stall and kept isolated from other horses and general ongoings will be more reactive. Environmental can also refer to human-managed husbandry. One of the most controversial management ideals is weaning. The process is known as separating a foal from its mother so it no longer nurses. Traditionally, this is done by taking the foal out of sight and sound of the mare when the foal is around six months of age, though Ross has known this to happen younger. A foal that has been weaned and stalled at six months will experience heightened levels of stress, increasing the potential to develop behavioural issues later in life. A six-month-old foal that has been fence-weaned, on the other hand, has scientifically proven to be a less stressful method for both parties. A foal would naturally nurse until one year of age, sometimes longer. 
Ross has been fortunate enough to work with yearlings and youngsters that have had the freedom to do so naturally, and they have been some of the most sound-minded youngsters he'd ever worked with. Early learning experiences, whether training or environmental, play a fundamental role in the mental development of foals, ultimately shaping the horse they will grow to be. It is important to make early learning and handling experiences positive ones. As important as the early stages are, take your time in doing and don't feel the need to rush their training or the time spent with them. The quicker the rush, the faster things go wrong. Foals have a short attention span, much like those of small children. The younger, the shorter. So it's best to keep any training with them in small bursts of 5 to 15 minutes, gradually increasing the time with age. Contrary to popular horse talk, there are a wide number of exercises and activities to do with a foal, some of which include haltering, the process of working with the foal with freedom of choice, to be caught and haltered. Leading. Leading is a foundational basic for all domestic horses. Leading can be taught at liberty, though foals do have a limited attention span for this, more likely to follow from curiosity. Leading can be taught the feeling through the line and from vocal and physical cues. Grooming, always associated as a bonding exercise, where you may receive a nuzzle or two back. Grooming will allow the ability to get the foal used to touch all over their body. The best place to start is by the neck and shoulders before working back and down. Hoof handling. Picking up of the feet is not natural for the horse, so take your time in clarifying what you're asking and be consistent. Do not snatch or hang on, as this will only teach dull or fearful behaviour. Remember, it's not the job of a farrier to teach any horse to pick up their feet. Ring tie. Standing to tie is something asked of many horses. With the correct knowledge and setup, this can be taught in a short space of time. Trailer loading. With trailer loading being the number one problem horse owners face, a percentage of this could be avoided with some correct and calm training earlier down the line. Body communication. A great setup for liberty training. Body communication is using the awareness of how human body language can influence a rapport with the horse. Positive and relaxed mindset. Not all exercises are physical. Sometimes, just being in a calm and relaxed space is one of the most beneficial things you can do. There are many factors to consider in the training, education and management of a foal. But always allow yourself to be open to learning just as they are by creating both a comfortable and stable environment, combined with the correct training from the off, will allow you to begin a journey together that will last a lifetime.